Now, we've been talking about metronidazole, vancomycin. There's another drug out there, right? There's fidaxomycin. Why, why is it here? How is it different? How does it work? Uh, what is it? Well, fidaxomycin represents the new thinking or the new approach to CDF. So, you know, CDF is this very, our approach to CDF, I should say, is just as strange as the bacteria is. Because you know that on the package insert of many antibiotics, there's a warning, the use of this antibiotic will increase your patient's risk of C. diff. And we know that even antibiotics to use to, to, uh, that are used to treat C. diff, as, as, as we heard, increase your risk of, of C. diff. And hence, we, we treat C. diff with an antibiotic. So we treat the, the disease with its risk factor, which is really, there's really no other condition in medicine that I know of where the risk factor is actually uh, being used for therapy. So there is something that we don't do right. And particularly, if you look at vancomycin, metronidazole, for sure, that's an antibiotic designed to decimate the gut flora. And, and the last thing that you want to do in someone who had C. diff is to further decimate the gut flora. But we also know that vancomycin, which is typically a gram-positive type of antibiotic, will decimate many of the gram-negatives at the concentrations that it's uh, achieving. So, so we're saying, well, there is something that we do wrong, and we see this very high recurrence rate. And in fact, as Dale mentioned earlier, there was always a question of whether uh, C. diff was born to have such a high recurrence rate, or is there something that we do that facilitates this recurrence rate? And I think that this gen study that ended up uh, failing that um, um, uh, Dale uh, mentioned earlier actually showed that if you take a no antibiotic approach, you may actually have much lower recurrence. The problem is that when you have someone sick with C. diff, you have to treat their symptoms. You have to make them feel better. And for the foreseeable future, and, uh, and I guess people will agree here, we are going to use antibiotics. So then the question is, how can we make the antibiotics more targeted therapy? And fidaxomycin represents this new approach. So what we're trying to do, what we're trying to do with fidaxomycin is designing an antibiotic that's narrow spectrum, that's targeting Clostridium difficile and perhaps a few other bacteria, but that will leave the, the rest of the gut flora alone so that at the time that you treat C. diff, you don't further deplete the gut flora with the belief or the, the, the understanding that by the end of therapy, which is the vulnerable period of time, the gut flora is going to be robust enough to prevent recurrence. Now, fidaxomycin works in a different mechanism of action uh, as well as compared to uh, some of the other antibiotics. Um, and without getting into the specifics of the mechanism, I think it's important to mention that it's cytol for C. diff. It kills C. diff very well versus some of the other antibiotics that may or may not kill C. diff. And it does that in concentrations that are lower than the con concentrations required for vancomycin or metronidazole. You, you can't leave me hanging, though. You can't tell me we know the mechanism, but I'm not going to share it with you. Tell me a little bit about how the darn thing works. So, so fidaxomycin is an RNA polymerase inhibitor. So basically, it interferes with the ability of the bacteria to transcript and replicate their DNA. Okay. And, and so it's a DNA toxin, or RNA toxin, uh, if you want, in, in, in a sense. And, and without RNA, uh, there's no protein synthesis. And without protein synthesis, in the case of fidaxomycin and Clostridium difficile combination, this results in, in, in cytal activity. And how did they get it specific for C. diff as opposed to all comers? Well, uh, that's interesting. It actually makes fidaxomycin a, a, a really uh, unattractive antibiotics, if you think about that. All antibiotics approved in the past 15, 20 years were just bigger and more broad spectrum and more active. And now we have an antibiotic that was, was, was claimed to fame is actually what it doesn't do and what and not what it does do. So it, 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 it's really, um, so fidaxomycin is actually a natural product. It, it's produced by, uh, by a bacteria that, that exists in nature. And, and, and it tends to only affect gram-positive bacteria and only some gram-positive bacteria. Now, it's not completely specific to Clostridium difficile. We know it can affect enterococci. We know it can affect uh, some other types of Clostridia as well. But if you monitor the gut flora over time and look at patients who received uh, fidaxomycin for 10 days as opposed to metronidazole flagell, you see that the effect on the gut flora is much more limited. Okay, so it's more focused. Yeah, you more see, focused. I mean, well, what's been demonstrated is that, you know, as I mentioned before, there are certain bacterial populations, communities that appear to be protective against C. difficile from causing infection, and fidaxomycin tends not to kill those bacteria. It actually allows them to come back while on therapy. So it, it's kind of a two-pronged goodness here, right? It kills the bad guys and lets the good guys who protect you from the bad guys repopulate. Exactly. Well, that's not bad. I got a thumbs up over there. I like that. <laughs> Talk to him about how good my questions are. Okay. Um, <laughs> There must be then head-to-head -head studies, right? Fidaxomycin versus Vanco in terms of uh, the risk for recurrence, for example. What does that show? There, there have been studies. Uh, there actually have been several studies, two large uh, phase three studies, 
Uh, first, they looked at cure rates and they uh, showed that fidaxomycin was very similar to vancomycin, producing cure in about 90% of patients. And as I mentioned earlier, in the real world, it's probably a bit uh, higher uh, for both uh, antibiotics. But the most important thing is the second part of the study, when you stop therapy and actually follow those patients for recurrence, and in, in the case of fidaxomycin, the recurrence rate was lower. One of four patients on, on the average uh, developed a recurrence if they were treated with vancomycin, one in eight patients, so half the recurrence rate, uh, more or less, uh, happened with, uh, with fidaxomycin, about 13% uh, of patients. Well, that's a dramatic difference, actually. 